Hey y'all, Coach and Fai here from Hermes Academy. I want to give a little short talk about um, the Angel of Repentance. Um, this is Hermes Academy. Hermes Academy of, was founded around a book called The Shepherd of Hermes. It's a book that you find in the Lost Books of the Bible or the Forgotten Books of Eden. And this book is um, a very is an extremely important book. I was uh, arguing with my wife. Um, I was talking to my wife about whether or not it could be the most important book in the 21st century, even comparable to the Third Testament of the Bible. Now, the Third Testament of the Bible says that it is more important, and that is the reason why I believe it is. Other than that, I can't see any other book that could be more important than the Shepherd of Hermas. And the Shepherd of Hermas, you hear about baptism, you hear, uh, and you even go as far as to hear about the tower, the tower that we hear about in Revelations, and, you know, this third temple that's supposed to be built. It's only in the book of the Shepherd of Hermas do we get, do we even hear about the tower? And, but the Shepherd of Hermas goes on to not only explain what the tower is, what it looks like, how it's built, when it is built, where it will be, it gives a bunch of details as far as the tower is concerned. But the thing about the, the Shepherd of Hermas is, is um, it's one of the first books that we start to hear from an angel. And all of the, if you remember the story of how they canonized the 66 books, the, one of the reasons why they left out other books was because they, you know, you had angels talking or you had other supernatural things that man wasn't so ready to readily to accept. And so they excluded those books out of the scripture. But I would argue that every one of the scriptures, the documents that they left out are just as true, just as real, just as important as the, the ones that they actually included in the, um, the Canaanized books. Now, one of the ones that they did leave out reluctantly was the Shepherd of Hermas and I say reluctantly because they actually had it in there at first and then they took it out later on um, it was that before the Canaanized books came out in 1611 they had actually removed it but it, it lasted one it, it was one that lasted a long time um, but like I said it is written uh, uh, from from the perspective of an angel an angel had a lot of input into writing of that book it was actually written by Hermes but he got all of his information directly from an angel now the purpose of this class is to tell you where we first hear about this angel and as here in Exodus chapter 23 in Exodus chapter 23 it says behold I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared, that's the angel of repentance. And how do we know that this is the angel of repentance? We start to compare who the angel of repentance is that we hear about in the Shepherd of Hermes and what he does to what we're actually hearing about here. Right? We see, first of all, he says that um, this angel is to keep you in the way. Right. And what would and what would this way involve? This way would involve the mandates and the commands that we hear about in Shep in the Shepherd of Hermas and how we're supposed to live our life. Like I said, the Shepherd of Hermas, it tells us what it takes to get inside of the tower. And a lot of that deals with, you know, the principalities and the powers um, that we hear about in the New Testament of the Bible. It explains those principalities. It tells us who those powers are and how those powers interact with our life, the good ones. And there are also bad ones as well but it explains those in the shepherd of Hermas and he says to bring thee into a place which I have prepared and we understand that this is what this is all about people say that the Bible is the basic instructions before leaving earth well I don't know about that leaving earth part but I do know that it is the basic instructions before we are to inherit the kingdom of heaven you know I believe that's where they get that earth leaving earth part from is because they don't believe that the kingdom of heaven is down here on earth but it actually is for 1,000 years we'll have a reign we'll have the uh, father uh, uh, who would actually reign over the earth he's actually going to be the king of the earth for the first time ever we're going to have the father as our king remember we started off with Saul and then it went to David and Solomon and some other kings but the father himself has never been the king of the earth uh, but he's going to be in the in the millennial age and that's why they call it the, the kingdom age or the kingdom of heaven and so that's what this angel is doing is helping us to get in there we have to obey him we have to do what he say if we ever want to inherit the earth for those who plan to go in the harvest uh, where they're going to go into the spirit world for a while they may not have to be so concerned about this kind of stuff but us who want to inherit the earth we're going to have to obey this angel look at verse 21 it says beware of him and obey his voice 
provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him talking about the angel of repentance we find out that he is a very powerful angel he his job and his responsibility is extremely important he doesn't outrank the angel of god we know the angel of god is actually michael he doesn't he may not even outrank gabriel and those guys but his job nonetheless is extremely important because why because he's over our repentance he's over us actually getting uh back into um uh, atonement with the father we cannot atone we can't get atonement back to the father without the angel of repentance and so you can see why his job is extremely um, important and you see right here it says obey his voice and provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him now another person this could be I, i'm pretty sure i told my wife i was 100 percent sure i'm gonna back that up to about 90 to 95 percent sure that this angel that he's talking about is the angel of repentance because what he's talking about here also fits the description of our conscience our conscience but our conscience is not an angel right our conscience is not an angel so i'm back up to about 97 98 percent sure that this is the angel of repentance that he's talking about um look at verse 22 he says but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak then i will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries talking about those commands that we hear about in the shepherd of Hermas. remember that this bit is broken down into three books with the middle book being the commands or the mandates or those things that we actually have to apply in our life whereas the other parts of the book is more about parables and similitudes and visions and kind of stuff we get direct commands and stuff that we are are to do and are not to do in the middle part of the book and that's what he's talking about here if we are to obey those then he will come and he become an adversary to our adversaries and an enemy to our enemies right and it's because of those powers that it's such once we uh get in tune with those principalities and powers and start obeying those commands then we start to receive power ourselves, and the father is not going to let the you know the the other people come and harm us we become what he's called holy or separated and we don't have to worry about those people who are unholy or unseparated coming and taking us anymore so when they try when they try to become our enemy well we have somebody fighting for us and those that are fighting with us the father fights with them too but again it's only after we obey the voice of the angel of repentance we have to obey him verse 23 says mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the amorites the hatites the Perizzites, and the canaanites the havites and the jebusites and i will cut them off all right so this is the kind of stuff we can expect after we have um um uh, become friends with the angel of repentance we can expect the father to go for us and start making a way for us giving us our own land our own ability for us to live our lives in peace and some of these people have to go they can't be around they're going to disrupt our peace and so he drives them out he drives these people out these are people groups here um and you have to find out who they who they are in the um in this day and age of course you know these it's not really bloodline people that they're talking about but you know um, they do have these personality traits and you know we can find those out if we go look at the um, the root words look up the Greek or the um, the Hebrew you know origins of these words and and start to figure out what these words mean we can figure out who these people are all right so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But either way, y'all pray for us and leave a comment.